Well, we're going to go on a journey together. Would you like to hold hands? No. I like the bass, 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 skip, bass. I like the buttery biscuit, bass. Hello, welcome to episode 38. <laughs> first thing that came to my mind, as I said, the first thing that came to my mind was buttery biscuit, bass, and that's, I don't have any bingo numbers, I'm sorry, I've given up on that, because I failed miserably, so. 38 is the easiest one you could have rhymed to as well. Well, we're even so fucking easy, you come up with one then. Gate, fate, hate. <laughs> that's not a rhyme. It's the podcast you hate, it's episode oh, 38. That is really good. Oh, fuck, that is actually quite good. Shit. Thanks, Reddit. It's, it's the podcast. You- <laughs> <laughs> no one's going to get that joke at me. I know, it's just for me, that one. Yeah, welcome to the podcast you hate. Episode 38. Everyone loves us. I mean... We don't sound like a bunch of twats. <laughs> 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 Only sometimes. Only sometimes. For people wondering what the fuck we're talking about, without going too much detail, Reddit didn't like us very much, <laughs> so... <laughs> They may have sent a few comments our way, and uh, yeah. Apparently, That's Reddit it. likes Euro Trip more than they like us. <laughs> mm. Who'd have thunk it? And we we sound terrible. We're terrible people for trying to cancel Euro Trip. <laughs> oh well. Anyway, welcome to Thirty Eight. It's still it's still us. It's still the podcast, and it's still COVID. Yeah. Why'd you have to ruin it? I guess <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to think about COVID anymore. <laughs> All right, sorry. Okay, well, um, let's talk about film, shall we? Pen, cheer us up. Oh. As always. Yeah, now you fucking dug yourself in a hole. Cheer us up as always with a nice little film that you watched, please. Well, I was going through my list, as I usually do. <laughs> Sent the boys a synopsis, but it was like a 2.1 on IMDb. Good start. I was looking for something more around a four. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine. So, at this rate, the four is a fucking ten at this point, I think. <laughs> Imagine setting your standards on a four. Yeah. I think the 2.1 is going to be better because That's it's going to be shit to and we'll have issues with it. As opposed to a four where we'll both go, sounds fucking average. That sounds all right. Just below average. Well, I suddenly remembered, because we haven't talked about it in a while, that I have a Shudder account. I love you, Shudder, but there's not masses of new stuff that does surprise me <laughs> are you complaining nope. to shudder live on the podcast nope. <laughs> that there's no new content nope. <laughs> but they got me they got me with the poster for hmm, two different years on this one imdb is saying 2016's beyond the gates 5.2 so i went above average for what i was looking for okay beyond the gates promising two brothers find a mysterious vh <laughs> Try and get the question, please, again. That's what just made me laugh. Oh, fucking hell. Penny, are you legitimately drunk? Because we had this conversation beforehand. And you, know. was, you can't stop laughing now. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's happened. So me and Andy, all right, just before you get, me and Andy were like, there's something going on with Penny. <laughs> we don't know. And she doesn't know if she's like, a sugar high or she's drunk, not drunk. we don't know so we're a bit confused she's either in a good mood or she's drunk and the chances are she's probably I'm drunk because neither of us both. have ever seen her in a good I'm mood just high <laughs> on coke zero and coca-cola tic tacs sorry that's what it is you say they're coca-cola tic tacs it's just coke <laughs> you're just knocking back cocaine that defeats the purpose of a tic tac though or a fucking coke tic tac that's just <laughs> completely <laughs> opposite of what tic tacs are for it's amazing that's what it aren't is. they supposed to be the fresh breath maker yeah. Instead, they're just the... I don't know. Carbonated water maker. Just says limited mint. edition Tic Tac made with Coca-Cola. And they're white and they have Coca-Cola printed on them in red. Nobody cares about this. Why are we talking about this? All right, well, stay off know. them for a bit, please. I'm worried about you. Okay. So two brothers find a mysterious <laughs> VHS board game <laughs> that leads them into a demonic realm. Ooh. Interesting. Interesting. So it's Jumanji with, v- with Fuck VHS. Fuck off. My mum said Jumanji too. No. <laughs> Atmosphere. Ever played Atmosphere? <laughs> nah, Jumanji. No. Atmosphere. I played Jumanji. Played Jumanji. Atmosphere was an Atmosphere was an actual VHS ball game, which I'm gonna make you guys play if we ever get to hang out ever again. We've never hung out ever again. <laughs> no. Right. Stop going off on tangents. That's my job. I kind of like it. <laughs> I might do it more often. It's good fun, it's isn't it? Quite, no, you have to fun. be the glue. <laughs> it's quite fun, yeah. No, I quite like it now. It's a nice new role. It's taking my job, guys. Okay. But yeah, Atmosphere was an incredible board game from the 90s where, yeah, you put the VHS tape in 
and play along with it for an hour. I think I played it. It's the bald guy, isn't it? Who's dressed up like a wizard that's on and he's telling you stuff, like talking to you. He's the gatekeeper. Yeah, I think I played it. So they, they redid it on DVD. It's only 45 minutes. It's not as good. They did a couple of other versions. They did Atmosphere 2 was Baron Samdi, the zombie, the Elizabeth Bathory, the vampire. They did a bunch of them. Baron Samdi, the zombie? Yeah, he was a zombie. That was a good one. Is he a zombie? He's like a, he's like a voodoo priest, isn't he? Yeah, something like that. That one's good too. Three and four are not good. Is he like Reverend Zombie? No. Oh. He looks like him. Anyway. Okay. So the poster's really 80s. It's about similar to a ball game I really like. It's got like VHS credits and 80s synth vibes at the beginning. I was very, very excited. <laughs> Guess what? Wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be. Oh, so. fucking oh, no. shocker. Whoa. We need to start playing Bennett oh, Bingo. Yeah. <laughs> Get some cards made. Bennett Bingo. Oh my God. We can market that on Facebook. <laughs> Everyone, before you listen to an episode, print out your Bennett Bingo sheets and whatever she says. Yeah. Why is it just stamp. me? Why can't it be us? Because it doesn't work the same, no. is it? Unless Why? You say it's absolutely fine, and Dan says so well, look, all the time. Because you're the only one that Bennett Bingo works for. We could play Joyce Jenga. <laughs> what the fuck is Joyce Jenga? <laughs> <laughs> it's like Jenga, but with my name on it, apparently. When everything falls apart. I mean, it's fitting. But, Pretty yeah. much. I mean, yeah, it does work, doesn't it? So. Anyway. <laughs> So it starts off, got the grand opening of a video store, and then they have the credits. Blockbuster? No, just like a little hometown video store, a uh, guy and his wife and two oh. kids. Then we have the credits, and then we see the, what I can now assume is the two grown-up kids coming back to the store, because it turns out their dad has been missing for seven months. So they're going to the video store to, obviously it's been closed, to clear it out, and I'm waiting for but you can't see Dan's face. <laughs> Go on. So, sorry, the dad's gone missing. Yep. <laughs> I'm already questioning. Yep. Dad's yep. gone missing. So they're going back to the video store? Well, they haven't been able to find him for like seven months. So I feel like at this point, they're like, well, we should probably clear out the store and sort out his shit. Did he say, I'm just going to pop out to get a film and then never come back? No. Has he just left the family and not told them? He owned the store. Sorry. Oh, okay. I didn't right, point that right. out. You went out to get cigarette with the dog. Never came back. <laughs> One of those classic stories. Yeah, classic. Yeah. Happened in Lassie, I think. So remember how good Leak Watch was? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, well, fucking Derek Watch is alive and well because the two guys, who I don't find out their names for ages, Gordon and John are the main characters. <laughs> their mate Derek God. turns up. Gordon, John and Derek. Yep. Lads, lads, lads. They, yeah. I'm just sorry. They just sound like lads on the on the prowl. <laughs> I was very excited that his name was Derek, though. Gordon and John are clearing out the store. Derek pops by to make his character known, I guess. And they... <laughs> That's how films work. <laughs> yep. Hello, I'm Derek. See you later. I can't remember why he was there. I think he just was like... I think he just popped by to be like, oh, sorry about your dad. Can I have this videotape? See you later. So the shop is still open? No, but he knows they're there, I guess, because they used to be friends. This is all of not very exciting. Don't dwell on it. Gordon's girlfriend, Margot, because all these people are 70 years old, apparently, with their old names. Gordon and Margot, <laughs> she's come to town to help out Gordon, and they're staying at Gordon's dad's house while they clear out the store. What's this film called again? Beyond the Gates. Right. Lassie 3. So Gordon and Margot, Margot drags him out for dinner. She's like, let's go out for dinner. And they end up in a bar. And in walk John and his friend Hank. And <laughs> Hank is a douchebag. What's with these names? Sorry. I don't know. <laughs> Hank is another old man, isn't he? Yeah, I know. It's like Hank. <laughs> so John and Mark are dicks. And Gordon and Margot leave and go home and go to bed. There's a whole storyline of how Margot doesn't sleep very well so she has to take Ambien before she goes to bed which is basically why she doesn't wake up through most of the nighttime scenes because she's on Ambien (laughs) so just to get her out of the way so they don't have to worry about her I think so because every time Gordon goes to bed he sees ghosts at his dad's house (laughs) but she doesn't wake up because she's on Ambien so it's a ghost film no not really. <laughs> okay. They eventually find the key. They're back at the, the video store and they eventually find the key to their dad's office. And they go in and there is a VHS in the player for Beyond the Gates. Ooh. So they have a weird conversation about what if it's a sex tape. Unnecessary. 
and beyond the gates wouldn't sound well actually no it would wouldn't it what if it was beyond the gaze i don't know what it <laughs> That's all of your sex tape. <laughs> they put the VHS on, and there is a blonde lady with quite dark eye makeup on, and she is played by Barbara Crampton. And you're not horror nerds, but she was in Barbara? Reanimator. It's another old person's name. <laughs> sorry. Well, that's, that's the actress's name in Venice. She was in Reanimator. Oh, yeah, sorry. Sorry, she sorry. was in Reanimator, From Beyond, and Chopping Mall. Chopping Mall is a great pun. I keep meaning to watch it. I feel like I've seen enough clips of it to not need to see the whole thing at this point, though. Hmm. But anyway, so she's coming to get you, Barbara. (laughs) Sorry. I'm very proud of you, Dan. She's the gatekeeper of this game. She is the face on the VHS. She is the person that's talking to them. Right. Then the video gets really, really bright and kind of (laughs) glitchy. But from the reviews I read, there wasn't a lot of budget for this. So it just kind of gets really bright and there's a loud noise. So they're like, oh, it's weird. And they turn it off. And then they're like, oh, how long have we been in there? What time is it? Like, oh, it's five o'clock. Like, they seem to have lost time, but I don't know what time it was beforehand. So, <laughs> but they make a thing about making it look like they've lost time, but then that's not a thing ever again. All right. <laughs> hmm. So then Gordon invites John to dinner and John brings the game and Margot is like, yeah, let's play. So they put the tape back on. And Barbara comes on and she kind of explains the game. She just kind of says, collect the four keys or we're going to take your soul, basically. She doesn't really explain it, but she's like, you have to get the four keys. Or so how many gonna... players? There's the three of them. It's going to be John and Gordon and Margot that are going to play. Okay. What happened to Derek? Uh, he just popped in. He'll, he'll be back. He'll be back later. Good, don't worry good. about Derek. Oof, it's worried, I, miss him. I miss him already. Yeah. <laughs> and she's not really explaining the game, but she kind of is. And she's like, blah, 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 blah. And then she says... Only then can your father's soul be saved. Oh, so can we work out so what's she happened? She knows something. She's got his soul. That's a weird uh, DM to have on the night. You know, just saying <laughs> casually that your father's soul will be saved. I never experienced yeah. that. And... I mean, if we use our <laughs> inference skills, we can determine that the dad played the game and now something has happened to him and now they're going to need to play the game. It takes them a little bit longer to work that out. Ah, that's all right. The best part? I don't know if this one of my favorite parts. So obviously if you have if you play a VHS game and it says like do this, eventually if you didn't do it, the VHS would just keep playing and he would just keep telling like now player two, do the or whatever. Barbara doesn't do that. Barbara just sits and waits. <laughs> so she'll be like, open the board. And if you don't do it till the next day, she doesn't say anything. She just sits there and waits. Because <laughs> that is what they do. Wait, but it it's is she because she's mysteriously spooky, is she able to see them, I guess? You know? I guess so, yeah. yeah. I know what you mean, like VHS, like they used to sit and go, you know, do the action. Well, it gave you time to do it, yeah. Yeah, but is she actually, like, able to see them? Yeah, so I think the first time they played the tape in the dad's office, she says, now open the board. Right. And they don't do it, they turn it off. And then she's just sitting there waiting the next time they turn it on. Oh, uh, okay. And they're like, oh, what did she say last? <laughs> oh, did she say something about opening the board? And then they open it and she's like, now this is how you play. And she just sits and waits until they kind of respond, which is quite funny. Are you sure they didn't just pause it? No. This sounds like one of my fucking nightmare fucking board game nights where I try to get everyone <laughs> together and everyone's not fucking paying attention to me. I feel like Barbara right now. I feel reliable. Look, I don't know who you're referring to, but it's certainly not fucking me. You, you fucking scumbag. Fucking <laughs> listen, listen to my rules about fucking whatever game we play. They last. go on for 35 minutes. Like, I just want to play the game. Yeah, because they're important. List like Barbara said, she's the fucking important to save the soul of her dad. It doesn't take 30 minutes to explain how to play Snap, Dan. We didn't, we never played Snap. I don't lower myself to those fucking standards. Jesus Christ. Don't announce that on fucking national podcasting radio <laughs> if it helps i'm pretty sure anyone that's ever played atmosphere with the bennett's doesn't want to play with us again because we take it very seriously and if you're not paying attention and it's your go you get shouted at. <laughs> good that's my kind of crowd i fucking I, I prefer that we've only got an hour so it gets yeah. faster and faster yes yeah, so you anyway so they <laughs> they turn off the tape they're like this is fucking weird we should probably talk to Derek. Because they've mentioned my dad and the dad's missing and Derek is a policeman. So they're like, we'll talk to Derek in the morning. And they go to bed. <laughs> There's some more ghosts. 
then you're, just, you're lightly sorry you're just lightly brushing over the ghost what is it they're just <laughs> what standing there and then they go away it's just a casual ghost you know? just casual ghost you don't really see it it's like i think the first thing they i think gordon can hear someone at the window and then later on he sees a shadowy figure oh so it's just noises and so it's just like a stuff yeah and then you kind of see a figure and i'm like oh it's a ghost or whatever um <laughs> What's happened to you? <laughs> it's just a ghost or whatever. <laughs> so nonchalant. This film was absolutely fine. It was very slow. I feel like not a lot happened until like 45 minutes in. Well, just like any so other board game night, you start off slow. No one knows the rules. But by the end, you all enjoy yourself and have a good time. You want to play again? Yeah. We'll see if that happens. Sure. Gordon goes into the other room. The TV is on, but it's just static now. No Barbara. And then he finds a photo of Barbara in a frame in the house. <laughs> it's never mentioned again. Why are you laughing? <laughs> it's never mentioned again. <sighs> oh, okay. That's that's even weirder. He goes originally he goes into the house. Like he goes into his dad's house and there's lots of pictures of them as kids in frames everywhere. Yeah. So then he picks up one of the frames and it's got Barbara in it and you're like, "All right, okay." Oh, just the woman on the fucking TV that we've been yeah. so she's so just like, that's in one of the frames. Okay. Yeah. Mm. And then Margot turns up. She also takes Ambien because she has a habit of sleepwalking. <laughs> so everyone's just getting drugged up. <laughs> so, yeah. so convenient. Yeah. I need to take that shit. So at this point, they're a bit freaked out. So they call Derek straight away. They're all sat by the board and they've got the telly on. And Barbara's just sitting there. like, And they're like, look, look at this weird woman on the telly. And Derek's like, what are you talking about? It's just static. Oh. And they're like, can't you see the blonde lady with the big eyes? And he's like, no, why are you all trying to prank me? Oh, and he can't see twist. Barbara at all. Twist. I'm assuming because he's not playing the game. Yeah. But, yeah. Or Derek is trying to prank them and he can see it. And Maybe. he's like, what the fuck are you talking about, you prick? <laughs> this is brilliant. Maybe he just doesn't want to get involved in their bullshit. <laughs> Probably. It's just like, I don't want to deal with ghosts. That's such a Derek move, isn't it? Yeah. True. So they're like, oh. We might have to play the game. They fuck around with whether they've got to play it or not for a while. They turn the TV off and then they look in the box for like a clue and they find, I can't remember what they find, but they they find something. Is it Professor Plum? (laughs) With the candlestick. I think they find out where it came from. Where the game came from. So they end up at a shop. Right. And it's, of course, a very creepy shop, and it's full of bones and potion bottles and weird shit. <laughs> and it is owned by a stereotypical creepy guy that basically says, yeah, your dad bought this a while ago. It always ends up back here. Basically, you've got to play it. Can't really tell you anything about it, but you've got to play it. He's like a really creepy butler. He's like a creepy butler? Like a stereotypical creepy butler, but they put him in a shop. That's what he's like. <laughs> Okay. I've just got images of Treehouse of Horror X from The Simpsons of yeah. the Frogert guy. Yep. Which is interesting because I was thinking Paul Burrell. Oh, were you? <laughs> That's a reference what? that few people are going to get outside the UK. Oh, yep. okay. Or people who didn't think about the fucking royal family in the mid-2000s. <laughs> no, no, either that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> R.I.P. Diana. And that was it. <laughs> the clue from the game had a picture of a knife on it. He st- he, they... St- Fucking hell, Bennett, calm down. John sees the knife in the creepy shop and nicks it because he saw it on a card in the box. They go back to the TV and Barbara is still just sitting there and they don't they don't know what to do. So they try and move a piece and it moves itself back again and they're like, oh, she doesn't like that, does she? And then she just says, a wise man would read the instructions. <laughs> so they, this whole time they've been like, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to play. And she's like, read the instructions, dickhead. <laughs> How far into this film are we when she says read the instructions? Quite a long way. I think um, three notes down, it says now we're getting somewhere 45 minutes in. So we're a little way in. <laughs> nice, nice. It was about an hour and 20. So we're probably half hour, 40 minutes in at this point. So they're like, right, to, she says to start the game, roll the dice and seal the fate. I can't remember who rolls, but they roll snake eyes, oh. which she points out so she can see them to answer Dan's earlier question. Yeah. And he has to pick up the first card, and it's a picture of a guy who looks just like Hank. They don't notice that, but he looks just like Hank. It's really obvious. And she says, opening his poison organs will reveal the first key. His poison organs? This sounds like a really mm-hmm. shit board game night. I've had worse, don't worry. <laughs> It'll be much better when we play it. 
So then on the card, or I think the pieces move on the board game and it moves to a part of the board and they're like, oh, that looks like our backyard. So they go out in the backyard and there's like an X on the floor made out of grass so that they can find where the clue is. I feel like I ask this every time you talk about a horror film. Is this a parody or is it a straight horror? No, it's a real one, as far as I know. It sounds hilarious so far. No, it was very dull. Sorry. Uh, No, it says adventure horror. There is no comedy element as far as I know. So they go to the ex in the backyard and they dig up a voodoo doll. Looks a little bit like... It doesn't look as much like Hank, but it looks like him. And they don't really make the connection. I don't know whether... They don't make the connection that it looks like Hank. They don't really make the connection that it's a voodoo doll. They are a bit like, oh, what's this? What's a butt plug? Like, it doesn't... (laughs) Someone's been watching the highlight videos. So they put a butt plug in the voodoo doll. (laughs) So now we cut to Hank, and he is in a bar. He's back in the bar being a dick to this girl that he used to go out with that works in the bar. And they try and twist the voodoo doll when they can't, and then they're like, oh, I need to get in it. So they get a knife, and they cut into the voodoo doll. The voodoo doll starts bleeding, and so does Hank. So to get the key inside, they're pulling out the insides of the voodoo doll, and Hank's intestines are coming out like strings of sausages. And then they get the key out of the voodoo doll. And then Hank is dead in the bar. It's all right. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. The goal was, was all right. And my next note just says, too much talking, just play. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm thinking. It's like the, like the game hasn't really even kicked off yet. And it's just like, oh, no, there's an axe um, outside. <laughs> this is the issue I had with Would You Rather, though. A little bit, yeah, I guess. So. Yeah. Also, there's only three people playing it one of them's now dead and they've got to get four keys how's that gonna work they're all gonna die no um hank's not playing i thought hank was playing no hank's not playing. oh no it's john and gordon and margo john it? and gordon and margo are playing uh next note just says more ghosts <laughs> so so casual just, just the ghost it's so casual they probably put a lot of work into those cgi ghosts and fucking penny just goes off just a ghost I don't think they're CGI. I think they're shadowy figures that run past. I hope it's just someone in a blanket. <laughs> it's definitely a person later on, but it's not in a blanket. Spoilers. So then Gordon has a dream that Margo rips his heart out. And he does the whole, <sighs> wakes up. That was weird. Hmm. And then he goes into the other room and John is just stood staring at the TV with the static on. This is the point where Gordon finally works out that his dad's played the game and that's why he's disappeared. <laughs> What? All this time. At this point? Yep. He's like, oh, dad must have played this and that's why he's gone. No shit. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I mean, he raised a group of highly intelligent individuals. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm now just laughing at my own notes. Barbara pipes up, but you can't get a second key. That's not what she says. I'm paraphrasing, but she's basically like, all right, guys, now you've got the first one. Are you brave enough to get the next one? Like she waits for them to be near the TV. Oh, I've got an image of Barbara where she's like, literally Barbara Windsor from Carry On. It's like, no. that's what I've got yeah. in my head She's right a cheeky now. Cockney, isn't she? <laughs> she has like Cockney music. I fucking love Barbara Crampton, though. She's so good in Reanimator. I love her. And she looks great in this as well, but like, they definitely didn't utilise her very well. They've got three other cards that I assume have to do with the other three keys. One of them is clearly Margot, but they don't work that out. But after going through all of this and her going, well, you know, they've already killed a person. They found out that Hank is dead. Mm. The dad's missing and all this shit. And they're like, no, I'm just going to throw it away. They try and throw it away in the bin. Done that before. But you can't. And I've just written, just get on with it. (laughs) Margot goes to the creepy shop and is like, did my boyfriend, was he here like a couple of days ago? And he's like, yep. So she's trying to get some answers. She's like, has anyone ever beat it? No. Do we have to play it? Yes. What, how does it keep getting back to your shop? Like, why do people keep returning it? He's like, they don't. It just ends up here. But basically, you got to play it or you die. So everything we kind of already knew, but repeated. If nobody's ever, ever won it, then they're also dying. So you die either way. So what's the fucking point? Just cheat the system. Get out of the game. Take yourself out. <laughs> That's not what she was asking. But she's basically like, if we don't play it, will that work? And he's like, no, you're in now. You're fucked. So then... As per one of the pictures on one of the cards, Derek turns up with a shotgun. Uh, Interesting. Reliable Derek. Turns up at the house and just starts firing at them for no no reason. <laughs> okay. Derek. Derek is shooting at John and Gordon for no reason. They are they're in the garden. Wait, he's uh whoa, whoa, whoa. he's a police officer. Yeah. 
Okay? <laughs> <laughs> just keep that in mind. <laughs> he's a policeman. He's wearing. A, he's just wearing his wife beater now. And he's, he's not in his police <laughs> uniform anymore. And he's got his shotgun. He comes around the back of the house. They're in the back garden. And as they're kind of scrabbling around, Gordon puts his hand in some dirt and pulls out like an ornament. It's of a little grey head and there is a key sticking out of it. Just in some random bit of dirt. Yep. So Gordon pulls the key out of the head and mm. Derek's head explodes. More exploding Derek's, I've just realised. What? Oh, <laughs> yes. We're two for six. I only took 37 <laughs> episodes to get back to exploding Derek's. Jesus. Then we have a little bit of backstory about the dad. It's unnecessary, don't care at this point. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you're really selling this film for all these hardworking people who worked on this film. God. I'm sorry, guys. We sound like a bunch of twats. <laughs> oh, I feel like I say this every time. I was really excited for the premise. It was just boring. <gasps> yeah, it sounds it. As you can tell, I was I was bored. <laughs> there was not enough... Pizzazz? I was going to say, there was, not, there was not enough game to start with, like... I'm not about to say that I would know how to write a film any better than this. That is not what I'm saying. But the game was just completely underutilised. I don't know. Do you feel like they used the game more in Jumanji? Yeah. It's our only reference. It's Jumanji. <laughs> well, it seems she's not a Sinzathura. No. But like they would go back to the TV and Barbara would give them a cryptic clue. There was something about the key being in the mind. So that's why Derek's head exploded. And then they would just leave again. It wasn't... I, I don't know what I wanted, but it wasn't... It, it didn't have to be a board game. It could have been any creepy person telling them to do stuff. Because the game stuff would just appear. Like the little ornament with the head. It just appeared. Well, I think when you say stuff like a ghost appears and moving on, then it's not really doing well when they're trying to... I guess the ghost comes back later because they're trying to build it up. To, um, I wonder who, the, wonder who the ghost is. Yeah. So... I guess if those parts are not scary or anything, then... Well, I'm terrible for that. You have a film about a board game, essentially. A board yeah. game. <laughs> so, Which yeah. they didn't even really play. The, the TV, Barbara would just tell you something. And then, like, they weren't looking for that ornament with the head with the key in it. Just Derek turned up and started shooting him and he put his hand on it. Barbara got really annoyed and she just <laughs> placed it in the dirt. Yeah. She was like, oh, it's over there. Fucking find it. I've, I've been there. <laughs> yeah, it could have just made it like a creepy person. They could have, I don't know, found some ancient book with that shit in it. Like, it could have been anything that was putting... Yeah. That put the voodoo doll there, that put... Yeah. So, they go downstairs to the basement, and Margot goes, Was that always there? And it pans out, and it's a fucking gate. <laughs> There's a set of gates in the middle of their basement. They can walk around them. Like, it's not... So there's just a set of gates in the middle of the... In the middle of the room. Yeah. That they can walk around. Presumably when they go through it, they go to a different dimension. It's Narnia. Yeah, they go beyond the gates. Mm. Oh, now I get it! Yeah! Wow. So John touches the gate and a hand comes out and tries to grab him. So John stabs it. <laughs> <laughs> More yes. guys. So they could have been. It could have been just a helpful his dad. man. You could have been his dad. Fucking stab it. I was going for help, there. so he stabs him instead. Fucking hell! Get the shotty, shoot him. <laughs> so they're like, "Yeah, don't touch that again." And they just go back upstairs and go to bed. I hate these. The people. ghost appears, and uh, I'm like, "Oh, more ghosts! It looks like Mortis. You know that guy, Mortis, the the death metal man. Mortis? No, no, no death metal. He is like a death metal musician, and he wears like goblin makeup. He has a big long nose. I feel like Andy's googling it. M O R T I I S. Iron Maiden kind of looking guy. No, no. He looks more gobliny. I would say more like Dobby. No. More like Gua. Oh, okay, right. Fair enough. I love how you're like, oh, okay, and that means nothing to me. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> definitely more goblin. I tell you what, depending on how good your your Harry Potter knowledge is, mm. he looks like Grip Hook. Mm. Okay. No. <laughs> yeah. So so that is the, wizard, that's the ghost. <laughs> that's the ghost. I guess I'm assuming that is the spooky figure. Yeah, that's he attacks Gordon. John hears the scuffle, so John stabs him in the back. Gordon gets a baseball bat and smashes his head in. He is smushed. Okay. He's dead. But it's a ghost, isn't it? 
or it's a creepy... We don't know at this point. I don't really know. <laughs> no one knows. <laughs> no one has any idea what's going on. <laughs> well, I'm just thinking at one point, Barbara says... <laughs> Barbara says they have to go into the gate. They have to go in to the gates. They have to go beyond the gates. Otherwise, stuff will start to come out. Right. Well, it did. And, and they fucking stabbed him in the hand and it could have yeah. been his dad. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm assuming that's the stuff starting to like leak out of the gate. Mm. Okay. You don't want things gate. seeping out of the gate, do you? Nah, you don't I want knew a leaky you were going to fucking say that. <laughs> don't want a leaky gate. Rehash all content. That's Andy's forte. It's true. <laughs> Still gets the laughs like that. Still, get, still gets the thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> Margot's missing she's not in bed which is weird because you know she's on Ambien and then they just find her hanging out down by the gate in the basement hanging out <laughs> just having just, a drink I uh, got myself a wine she's standing there got a canapé hanging out with the gate you know and then I don't oh. really know what happened Gordon grabs her she's got black eyes so she's all possessed and like screaming and then somehow John has a key don't know where that came from might have missed that so because Barbara has then said they have to go in, they go in, so they walk through the gate, and then there's, I've just written, graphics. <laughs> so there is just like a weird, like, screensaver graphic that comes onto the screen. Right. And then disappears. And Barbara's like, if you find your dad, then you'll find the key, and if you find all four keys, then you're allowed to come back. Okay. So they get three keys to go in, and they need the last key to come back. Right. Hi. I'm used to board game nights, but even I'm totally fucking confused by the rules of this game. I know, I'm totally in. I'm still with it. <laughs> then the problem with this is, I'm assuming because there is no budget, I didn't look um, it up, but beyond the gate is just the basement covered in purple lights and smoke. Well, yeah. Mm, sexy. It's the same. It's almost like it's not the same. It's the same place on a different plane of existence, but yeah. it's all just purple. Yeah. That's how you do it. Slightly mood lighting beyond yeah. the gates. They find the real Margot, and then Derek and Hank come out and attack everyone and try and kill them. Wait, well, they were dead a minute ago. I think their souls went in the gate. In the <laughs> fuck's game. sake! No. What, Pat? <laughs> I was so excited. I was so excited. I was going to watch something else until I saw this, and then I was like, "No, I need to watch this immediately." And now she's bringing it to you, dear listeners. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Shudder. I don't think they made it, though. So. Sorry, Shudder. No apologising to our audience now. Sh sorry, Shudder. <laughs> no. Well, the audience are fine now, because now they don't have to watch it. They can watch one of the plethora of Shudder's good things. <laughs> it's on the top of their anyway. list. The ones that you haven't spoken about, apparently. <laughs> yeah, yet. <laughs> Mayhem's on Shudder, and I spoke about it, but we couldn't go into detail because it was too good. Anyway, they found his dad. They found the dad, and he's a little bit possessed. I don't want to say he's a zombie, but he's a little bit... <laughs> Drunk? Just a little bit. He's a little Just possessed. A little bit, little bit Not tipsy? a big possessed, a little possessed. He's a little bit, he's a little bit army of darkness kind of, he's just got some makeup on, some prosthetic makeup on and he's not very nice. Okay. Don't really want to call him a zombie or a ghost. He's just a bit. Just yeah. call him a prick. He could just have just a bad call night. call him a prick. He's probably hung over. <laughs> yeah, he's probably fucking, he was out last night. Having probably. A... He's been gone for He was hanging out with the gate. Yeah. <laughs> he's there he one on... too many. <laughs> He was, he's been missing, but he's been on a bender for like last week. <laughs> that's, that's the story. Like. <sighs> Let's get through this now. Nearly there. They kill Derek and Hank. Gordon stabs his dad with the dagger from earlier and pulls his heart out and holds it up. And then the heart disappears. And then non-possessed dad is back. Mm -hmm. They put the fourth key uh -huh. on the board. Barbara screams and everything's back to normal. Everything's back to normal. So they're back on the other side of the gate, the non-purple side of the gate. And then they're in the living room by the TV and Barbara's still on it. And they're like, she's still here. And she's like, yeah, well, your dad's soul is free now, but sorry, like you can't have his body back. So bye. <laughs> so they freed his soul from beyond the gate, but they can't have him back because he's still gone. So what do they do with his soul? Put it in a dog? It's gone. It's just, it's free. From... How valuable are souls on the market index today? I don't know. Mm. Probably better than Bitcoin at the moment. Right? Yeah. Mm. So they're a bit like, oh, well, I guess we saved him, but it would have been nice to see him again, <laughs> like to have him back. But he's gone. So then Gordon and Margot go home. I'm assuming John stays in his dad's house and it cuts to black. And then we get a scene of the creepy shop. You've got the creepy butler in the creepy shop. 
and a dude comes in and he's just like, have you got anything from the 80s? And the creepy butler is like, do you like board games? And then it's the end. I mean... Yeah. It sounds like one... It just sounds like a night out I had once. (laughs) (laughs) It really does. Like, there's a gate involved. There's getting a board game. Someone's dad may be missing for a week. You know, just stabbing like someone fucking, in the heart. Stabbing some, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm just yeah. doing some gardening in the back. <laughs> On IMDb, you know they have like trivia and things. It says crazy credits. A few seconds after the end credits, the woman from the game appears on screen and silently stares ahead for a few moments before the screen cuts to black. No one's going to get to the end of the end credits. I don't know why you bothered. You did. I didn't. No, she just checked it on IMDb. Yeah, it was under crazy credits. I um <laughs> nothing to say. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what what to say about that. I mean, it was absolutely uh, fine. It was yeah, was it? it was fine. Was it really? Well, I'll tell you the best thing about it is that it's made me really want to play Cluedo. You wait, we'll play Atmosphere and we'll record it for something. We'll record it for content. Yeah, we'll, we'll be, be hanging out. Am I going to be told the instructions, or is it going to be another shit D and D experience where I just have to fucking bollocks my way through it like normal? No, I'll have to tell you the instructions because if you can't play it, and then I'll get cross. <laughs> great. <laughs> Sounds like a really fun fucking night. <laughs> It'll be great. It'll be really good. It'll be content. There you go. So yeah, Beyond the Gates, <laughs> hit and a miss. Swing and a miss. Not hit and a miss. <laughs> Penny, do you want me to call you a cab? <laughs> do you want some water? I'm exhausted now. Do you want some water? You okay? have another Tic Tac. Oh, here we oh, go. No, 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 no. It's like you fucking lay off those Tic Tacs. She's dropping young, another oh, one. Fuck's sake. She's dropping another one. <laughs> I think there was two in there. Way too much. Okay. How may I assist you? We think our father bought this from your store a few years ago. Robert Hardesty. 1991. Well... I'm afraid it's a little late to make a return. (laughs) We were wondering if you knew where I came from. That's of no consequence to either of you. I trust you've played the tape. We have. And I suggest you play the game. Well, thanks for that. So, (laughs) I had a fun day today in my quest to as a recurrent segment to find the greatest video game movie there is and because there's not many of them super mario brothers yeah well we'll get to that when whenever i get to it. <laughs> this point it could be episode fucking 100 before i get through all of them but i decided that i was going to watch a film i didn't at both films I never saw it, but I'm a massive fan of the actual video game franchise. And so I was playing Hitman 3, new game that came out recently, and I thought, hey, I'm going to watch the Hitman <laughs> films from... It's because, Oliphant, I've gotten to you, haven't I? That's what it is. Just yeah. go with it. No. It's fine. No, I was playing Hitman 3, and I decided I was going to watch the Hitman films. That's nothing to do with Timothy at all. I was nice. like, oh, yeah, he's in it. I forgot. He's Hitman. How can you forget? At least in the first one. He's not my Hitman. Hashtag not my Hitman. He's your Hitman. Well, uh, we'll get to it. Uh, so, <laughs> my Hitman is the one in the video game. He's much better than fucking both of these. <laughs> anyway, there was two films that came out. 2007 one, yes, starring Timothy Olyphant. And then there was uh, one that came out in 2015 called uh, a reboot because the other one didn't do... Well, it did very well. It actually sold a lot. Yeah. It did a lot of money. And... Yeah. Um, but they rebooted it because uh, it's, yeah, it had problems. In 2015, with Agent 47, Hitman Agent 47. But let's talk about my thoughts on the <laughs> Timothy one, and I'm sure Penny is very, very intrigued to hear. Timothy's not very good as a Hitman. Oh, <laughs> I had heard that. He's not big enough. It was quite a while ago, wasn't it, as well, that first one? 2007. 2007 was this one. See, so he wasn't, he was only known to like fangirls like me, wasn't he? Okay, he's not physically big enough. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's just, he's not big. I want my man big. Okay. He should be a bit bulky. I want my hitman big. <laughs> he's like quite a live hitman. He makes his head look like a fucking peanut. <laughs> he does a little bit. Oh. I think one of my notes says his head looks like a fucking orange reference to Cole Pilkinson, but yeah. It was 
the thing. Okay, I have. I don't. I'm not going to go through the whole film. I just have. I have notes on things that I found interesting in each film. The first note is Timothy's not a good hitman, mm. and I think the reason for that is he seems. Look, I don't think Timothy is a big part of that. Andy, you've seen this film, right? You've yeah. seen the first, seen the first one, yeah. I don't think Timothy is a, is the main issue of the film. I think it's possibly the direction and the script. <laughs> I think it's a bit... Yeah. yeah. Like, for example, in the video games world, if we're referencing the video game world, Agent 47 doesn't talk that much. And he's very mute. And he's very... He's very careful in everything he does. And the problem with making one of these films, and it's kind of questioning me of why they picked Hitman, is if you're going to have a character that is very mute and is very doesn't have much personality because they're actually programmed or not, like th- their actual training is to have no emotion. Yeah. Is it a good idea to make a film about the character being the main character? Because I don't think it is in either film. I'm just saying. I mean, uh, John Wick, partly down to Keanu Reeves. There's not really yeah. any emotion from him, apart from the dog dies. Spoilers. That's why I haven't watched it. Thanks. Rip that dog. But also, like, he's so wooden as an actor. Yeah. I'm going to shit on Keanu Reeves because I think he's crap. The views of Andy I'm do not... I'm picking fights with people deliberately. Do not reflect they definitely the don't views represent of me. me. Well done. I like him. He's a really nice dude. He seems like, like a proper sound guy, but... In terms of his acting ability, pretty piss poor. Okay. But well, it does prove film... that you can have like a static character like John Wick. So you could do the same with Agent Forty Seven. The problem is Olive Van didn't do it. No, I think there was so, there was just like so many things like in the actual action scenes when he's shooting the guns and stuff. It feels like Timothy's playing with toy guns, and I can't really describe it. But he doesn't look like a guy who would shoot a gun. It's hard to describe. I have a question because I haven't seen it. Yes. Because I don't want to watch him without hair. Yeah. That's legit me the only reason. Sure. <laughs> Timothy Oliphant is usually very quippy and kind of wisecracky in a lot of things. And yes. he's good at yeah. that. So if you're saying Hitman doesn't talk mm-hmm. a lot, is he wisecracky well, in this or no? Because Hitman is not. Put it this way. He's not wisecracky, but he does talk more than I think it man should. Yeah. Which I was is... going to say, he's quite a talky actor. I mean, that sounds like a really dumb thing to say. He, he talks in the film, but he comes across... As, he's try, I think what was happening was he was trying to be that mute character, very no emotion and stuff, but it comes across as bad acting because he's very like, yeah. we yeah. have to go now. Let us leave. Like, it's very much like that. Like, and yeah. it makes it look like he's a bad actor in the film. Like, I don't want to be all fangirly and be like, oh, well, normally he's very charismatic and chatty and things. So it doesn't sound like good casting. No, it's awful. <laughs> it's really bad. Yeah. Like, he has the bold look and everything. And another thing that kind of plays into this, and this is why video games don't really work as movies sometimes. Age of 47 has a barcode on the back of his head, as most people would know. Now, in the video game sense, that would work because it's a video game and it's not really as self-aware as a movie that's supposed to be based on real life and real people. You know what I mean? But, like, when you have a barcode (laughs) on the back of your head in real life as a real-life hitman and part of this movie is him being in disguises but his barcode always showing, (laughs) I think it misses the point like, there's a scene where he literally dresses up as someone else, like in an airport or something, and the guy he's, like, trying to spy on sees the barcode <laughs> and immediately knows it's him. Yeah. And I'm like, what's the fucking point of him yeah, dressing dumb. up in disguises? <laughs> yeah. It's just... Uh, and it's for the sake of, like, the tropes of the actual video game, because the video game is like, he dresses up in disguises, he plants traps everywhere. But with him... It just doesn't really work. And I, I, example, he kills someone in this film. I won't spoil it in case Penny does want to watch it, <laughs> but he kills someone in this film. His nickname is Silent Assassin. It means he doesn't show his face. Does he go pew pew and he kills him? <laughs> it's like the opposite. Does, he basically tries to leave nothing traced back to him, all right? But in the first 20 minutes, he makes a colossal fuck up by shooting someone very important, like in the world. And everyone is sees it, and it 
just go this is the problem with the film is that the referencing material is a silent assassin and you can't really do a silent mute assassin in a movie because it would be boring yeah. so they had to find like a balance between mutes timothy oliphant but he also has a bit of action scenes that are kind of like james bondy so because it looks cool but it's not really that kind of character i'm conflicted whether i go well he doesn't do that in the video games or i should just go in with this with a brand new kind of experience which i tried to do <laughs> and it still didn't fucking work for me <laughs> to be honest it's style over substance isn't it it is a bit yeah yeah, I put on it. Everyone feels like a robot. Everyone feels like they're reading from a script. Timothy is the worst at it because of his character. There's things they do, like they show someone playing the video game in the background, mm. which I'm like, oh, that's funny. But then they keep doing these Easter egg things that are like when he gets his suit, it's like there's a moment when he gets his actual 47 suit and stuff. But there's a thing in the games themselves where you can plant your contraband in like buckets and bins so you can come back to them later like your guns and stuff because 47 doesn't really carry around a lot of weapons in fact he has like a fiber wire that he uses and a coin that's pretty much his whole weapons and maybe a gun that's it maybe one pistol i like the idea but, of timothy squirreling stuff away in buckets for later <laughs> he, he does that <laughs> there's one scene in particular that kind of annoyed me because i didn't get it and i think they were just doing it for the sake of the easter egg of it where he's in a hotel he has two handguns. He puts two handguns in an ice bucket in a hotel room where you get your ice. And I'm like, oh, he's going to come back to these later on in the film. And he does come back to them later on in the film. However, he didn't need to do that. Yeah, it's not something really. you do in real life. It makes sense in a game, but you wouldn't do it. Yeah, it, it, like you're in a hotel it's an ice bucket. There's going to be people using the ice bucket. He literally just puts them, like, not really that deep either. Like, just above, like, <laughs> someone's going to find them is what yeah. I'm saying. It's just, I'm just utterly confused by some of the things they do. But I, I know it's because they're trying to please the fans and go, oh, yeah, he's doing all the things he do in the video game. It just, it doesn't work. And the storyline to this is really confusing really really confusing i had to look up the wikipedia because i lost track at, at one point it's about double crossing and governments crossing someone and then they're crossing 47 he's apparently part of the most secret service but all governments know about it and stuff like this and like it doesn't make like it's this top secret and but everyone, everyone knows yeah. about it and, uh, it it's ridiculous it, it is ridiculous it's a frustrating frustrating watch is how I put it for the Timothy Oliphant hitman, I would say, unfortunately. Sorry, Ben. That's all right. He can't be amazing all the time. All the time? Uh, anyway. Watch it. So, um, <laughs> he was all right and go, I guess. Well, the thing is, a lot of people saw the film. Made $100 million in the box office. Pretty good. So they decided that they were going to reboot it, get rid of the director, which is good, because I thought the direction was fucking awful, and replace Timothy with uh, Rupert Friend as Agent 47 in 2015's Hitman Agent 47. So it was a reboot, in a way... Because there's Hitman 2, uh, right? Sorry, I'm looking things up so I can pretend I know. No, that's the video. Okay. So the movie, so it goes Hitman, and then it goes Hitman Agent 47, gotcha. which is the second one that came out recently. But yeah, they got rid of Timothy. Maybe he could have done better with a bit of better direction, but either way... Maybe he didn't want to be in the second one. Don't say that they got rid of him. You don't know. I mean, they made a lot of money, so that he did something right. Yeah, maybe he just went, no, nah, this was shit. Why well, would hide guns in an ice bucket? I'm off. Yeah, I, I could see him saying it's probably not for me. Like, the casting-wise, it doesn't feel like Timothy should have been cast yeah. in it. But he could have been better with a little bit better yeah. direction and better storyline as well. But either way. So I was going in with this with a little bit of high hopes because I heard this one is better. I don't know how much better, but I just heard it was better. And they got rid of the old director. They had a bigger budget for this film as well. And they had a new Hitman, which I think they needed really just to change things up. So I went into this film with a lot of optimism. I will say that Rupert Friend is a really, really good Hitman. He's pretty good. He has a different style of Hitman in this one. He's a bit more darker. He's a bit more... He kind of reflects the actual Agent 47 a little bit more. He's still a bit mute, but he, he does actually have a little bit of emotion, so he doesn't look like he's reading from a script mm -hmm. all the time. I think the main difference is that he looks threatening. Yes, and he looks more threatening than Timothy. 
a lot more. Because Timothy Oliphant looks like he'd fall over in a stiff wind. You he, know, he looks like a cosplayer, doesn't he? A little bit. Yeah, he does. He does yeah. look like cosplayer. How is Dan my favourite now? He looks like any old bald prick who works in an office <laughs> with a shit tattoo on the back of their head. <laughs> Where'd you get that? Penny's oh, left. Magaloof. Penny's left. I've upset him too much. I've said too many bad things about Timothy Oliphant and she's left. She's gone. Pop that down on Bennett Bingo. <laughs> Will she leave? Penny leaves. <laughs> get a stamp. There we go. Done. So, yeah, I went in with this high hopes. Now, they did... Did you see this one, Andy? No, I didn't. Okay. They did a lot of things right. Like, a lot of things that were wrong in the previous film, they did a lot right. It was more engaging. It wasn't boring. The story was simple. It's about a girl, Agent 47 has to find the girl, and she's linked to an organization that's linked to 47, and they all link together, blah, blah, blah. It's much more simple than the first one. They got a lot of things right. There's more scenes that are more action-packed. They're actually quite entertaining. They're not just Timothy going, you are dead, bang. (laughs) You are dead, bang. Which is what (laughs) the first Hitman felt like. It's just Timothy going, you are dead, bang. Yeah. So this one has a lot more style, but the fan in me seriously was kind of didn't like what i saw in this because in order to make it more entertaining they made it more hollywood yeah a bit more michael so Bay. are we talking like big explosions yeah. car <sighs> chases yeah i've never played any of the hitman games but i don't believe that is part of it it's a stealth game so oh, yeah. Yeah. when i saw this one is it weird i've actually I, seen more look- of the game than i have the movies now i'm thinking about it it's all about sneaking around and killing yeah, people, people isn't it? not exploding them yeah pretty much so when i look back at the timothy oliphant one where it was his character was similar to what 47 should be even though it was quite it wasn't done that great and then i look at this one with rupert and he was cooler <laughs> but he can take down a chopper <laughs> Are you sure it's not just John McClane, no, bald John McClane, like, which is just any uh, John McClane, really? Like, the start of the film, 30 minutes in, I was hooked. I was like, this is great. I really liked this opening scene. It was really dark, really bloody. It was like really fucking gritty stuff. Really liked it. And then the story kicks in. <laughs> and it's about, again, the storyline just was like, it's all right. It's better, but it's just, it doesn't really, it's silly at times. So... There's a girl he has to find. I'm going to spoil it slightly. I'm not going to spoil the whole thing. There's a girl he has to find. And the reason he has to find this girl is because she is linked to 47's kind of academy when he was training up to be an assassin. And she's actually Agent 125 <laughs> or something. Right. So she is more advanced than 47 is but she doesn't know that she has these survival skills because she was taught at a young age and she kind of has forgotten them until 47 shows up what she got right. taught survival skills and then she's forgotten them just well because. She's... i mean they're not robots are they well, no how could she be more advanced well 47 can't so the, the agent 47 in this we get to see the hollywood side of it when he does something where he's trying to snipe someone from a long range and he doesn't see the target and he manages to fit like a bullet in between small gaps, you know, that kind of following yeah, the bullet yeah, in between. Yeah. And it exactly hits mm. the target. And that kind of bullshit happens in this one. And I'm like, oh, no, they've they've Hollywood it. They've hmm. made it more cinematic and stuff. And it gets even worse when he finds this girl. And because she is more advanced than he is in terms of training and stuff, but she even just doesn't she know forgot. until 47 shows up, even though she kind of forgot, but she has flashbacks all of a sudden. She can sense when there's people far away. <laughs> okay, hang on, hang on. <laughs> she can sense no, wait, wait, that wait. there are people. Like, wait. I can't do that, but I'm pretty sure I know that there are people far away. <laughs> this is just them trying to put in a mechanic, isn't it? No. This is yeah. like a stealth mechanic that you would have in the game, and they're like, oh, no, 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 I'm not talking like next door far away i'm talking far yeah, but i know there are people far away this doesn't make me an assassin yeah. so example she's like there's a bit where she's like walking down like a street and she can hear an, a couple arguing in like a house that's like on a flat that's on the top floor with the windows closed but she can hear so she calls the police on a payphone and just leaves the payphone and then the girl comes to the window and she gives a nod to say, thank you for helping me, uh, my abusive husband's girl who can, who can sense 
So yeah, she can hear very far away. <laughs> is that? But how does she do that? Because she doesn't have like robotic she, ears, does she? No, she has. So the purpose they're going with with this film is that so forty seven has survival instincts that's why he has in a way not superpowers but you know they can see things better than people they can hear things better superpowers. but she has supercharged <laughs> of these visions and like she can see things like from far further away than 47 she can hear things she knows what plan to go in like they're driving a car and he ends up making her a robin to his batman of course he does so he's like training her how old is she 20 i don't know 20 i just want in my head she was just like a child (laughs) for some reason no 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 she's like fully grown woman but (laughs) she's like he takes her under her wing and while they're in the field doing very very important work he actually gets her to make the decisions because she is the superior agent that she doesn't know she's an agent until 47 turns up agent and he will say stuff like they're driving the car getting away from someone and he'll go to her left or right and she goes middle <laughs> trust me i know they say trust me i know a lot in this film and he goes to the middle and of course it's the right way to go imagine out. that though so, you're like left or right and this girl's like middle and like fucking that's not what i fucking asked you middle hit a wall yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've got no option it's left or right it's yeah, dead end right. you've driven into a lake prick <laughs> i think i'm having a come down sorry everyone <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, it's it's more watchable than the first one. It's more action-packed. And I think mainstream audience-wise, people who don't care about the video games will prefer this one better because it is more action-packed. There's more action scenes and more gunfights and blah, blah, blah. Pew, pew. But in my heart of hearts, this is not 47. This is... They're trying to be James Bond in it a little bit on this. And it it works, I for the some part of it but then there's the superpower bit and i'm like that's bullshit that's ridiculous there's also a guy who has metal skin <laughs> that sounds uncomfortable <laughs> metal skin yeah so like you shoot him and he doesn't die so yeah there are still no superpowers I, I, don't, I don't know what this universe is like in the hitman games there's no one with metal sk- they're just people there's like sean beans in one of them <laughs> and he just says the easiest way to kill him is by turning on a machine and pressing the button and he's dead with these people <laughs> in this film they're like i have metal skin i can hear things from 500 fucking miles away and i'm like what now it's just it sounds ridiculous it's too hollywood Do you know what's really interesting well it's the timothy oliphant film it's got a higher yes. rating on IMDb than Agent 47. I think it's because it's stay true to 47 character a bit, but it was more boring, I would say. <laughs> it, was, it drags on and on and on, and I didn't know what was going on, and it has a really shitty ending. Also, uh, one last thing, the trope they played on, just going back to the first one, because there's a lot I could take out of the first one because there's so much shit in it. The first one plays on that trope of, you know, when you see like, like in Die Hard, Mm. when the FBI show up and they go, we're in charge here now. This is our jurisdiction. Mm. Yeah. That kind of trope. Fuck me. The first one has like... Happens every time, doesn't it? Has like five of them (laughs) incidents where a guy turns up and he's like... No, now we're in charge. And then, like, a few minutes later, no, now we're in charge. Now we're, now we're it. No, now we're, like, and it's like, oh my god, someone just fucking tell these people who the fuck's in charge. Have a fucking line manager for <laughs> once and just sort your fucking problems Where's out. Where's the FBI line manager? Where's your HR department? <laughs> I seem to remember it's always Degree Scott's character who is told that he's no longer in charge. But he works for Interpol. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. So it's like he's fucking superseding Interpol. Very few people. He's like, what's the fucking point of my job? Yeah. The Russian government overrules the Interpol, and then the FBI, I think, overrules the Russian government. And I'm yeah. like, what the fuck? Like, I couldn't get, I couldn't understand. Like, I it just lost me completely. And then Timothy Olfen's going, you are dead, bang. <laughs> you are dead, bang. And it just fell apart. And um, yeah, unfortunately. Do you know what I think is a better version of this? And I'm not sure you're going to like this. I'm going to put it out there. Go on. Because I think this is partially based on it. I'm going to say the transporter. That's Jason Statham, Oh, transporter suit. Oh. Yeah, Jason Statham. Quiet dude, big bull bloke. Kicks the shit out of everyone. Not so much stealth. Very Hollywood. Yeah, bang, bang, shoot, shoot, bang, bang. Well, bang. it's Luke Besson, so it's not oh, that Hollywood. You, shoot, shoot, bang, bang, shoot, shoot, bang, bang. Me love you. Yeah, I guess. But I think they've nailed the character of 47 <laughs> in that film. It's just not in a Hitman film. <laughs> yes. Pretty much. 
So the search goes on, I guess. Unfortunately, I can't really recommend either of these two, but I guess the second one, if you want a bit of action, but you don't like plot, you can watch the second one. <laughs> I always find that plot is the worst part of movies. Yeah. Yeah, the, both of them have just not great plots, to be honest. Unfortunately, the search goes on for the best video game movie of all time. I'm not sure Tune you're looking time. hard enough. I feel like... I mean, it will get worse. <laughs> Next time I uh, look at the Mortal Kombat series, <laughs> as the new Mortal Kombat is coming out, I might as well check out the old two Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Oh God, you've just reminded me what the fucking film out of the hat was. Fuck's sake. Oh, Pen. Oh, you just remember. reminded me what yeah. the film out of the hat was. Fucking hell. Join us for Power Rangers next week. So, why don't we start with your name? 47. It's not a name. No. But it is mine. Okay. All right, Mr. 47. What exactly are you? An assassin. An assassin. Okay. You're here to kill who exactly? Andy. <laughs> well, I'm going to lighten up a bit and talk about a Disney film. Mm, that's not what oh, I've heard. <laughs> well, what kind of Disney film? It's a Disney film that features a mouse as its main character. Do you want to guess <gasps> what it is? It's No, because um, you're doing that thing with like fucking road trip like you did before. No, I know. I It's, yeah, <laughs> fuck. It's not Fantasia. Remember. No, I know. It's, it's, ah, uh, it's the two, it's the girl mouse and the, and the boy mouse, right? Oh, the rescuers. Hmm. Uh, I'm in that Is movie. That the Rescuers. The little girl's name's Penny. Yeah. Hang on a minute. Let me have a look at this. This might be completely fucking You didn't different. watch The Rescuers. There's two Rescuers films. There's one... I'm not that Rescuers young. Down and Under. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, I've seen this one. Yeah. That's not the film I watched. I watched... Oh, you fucking bastard. What the fuck? Did you do that? Oh, <laughs> I watched Basil the Great Mouse oh! Detective. <laughs> Banger. What's the equivalent of Banger for a movie? Um... I guess banger. Oh, okay. Oh, I haven't seen it in years, but yeah. from what I remember, I haven't seen it. It was in a years. banger. Yeah. So I've never seen this before. I went into it with mm-hmm. fresh eyes. It was recommended to me. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> it's a recommendation. <laughs> oh no! It was a recommendation from Cat. He also recommended the placenta film. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers, Cat. So it could have been worse as recommendations go. <laughs> so let me set the scene for you. We're in London, 1980, uh, 1897, <laughs> Victorian London. And so there is a small girl mouse called Olivia, who's in a toy shop owned by her father. And it's her first birthday. Quick question. Sorry. Because I can't remember. Are there people in the universe or is it all mice? There's people in the universe. Okay. Talking mice, talking people. Isn't it? Well, just because you said she was in a shop owned by her father, but she was a mouse. So I wasn't sure where we were. She was in a small mouse shop. Yep. Gotcha. With you. <laughs> a shop run and managed by a mouse. Yep. <laughs> so it's her first birthday. Her dad... I guess makes her a little dancing mouse and it's very sweet. And she's like, oh, you're the best father ever. And it's a really touching moment. Oh, I know where you're going with this. And you just get like a sense of warmth. Why are you building this up to something? I can tell your fucking voice like... Mm. It's horrible. It's such a dark movie. Are you, just, you can hear it in his voice as I well. I don't remember it. I don't remember it And then a all. bat breaks in yeah. to the toy shop. So she hides in a cupboard. A mouse-sized yeah. cupboard. A mouse-sized cupboard. And there's a big old kerfuffle in the background. There's a load of like, noise and a ruckus. She comes out from the cupboard and she's like, Daddy, Daddy. But he's been kidnapped. So that's the opening thing you first see in this Disney film. And I was like... This is, though, when Disney used to do this all the time, though. Like, yeah. kids nowadays are not... Maybe with Up, and that's not a Disney film. Well, I suppose it is Disney Pixar. But, like, the, we were made of stronger stuff in the 80s. The shit we had to watch when we were kids. Like, Watership Down and all that stuff. There's definitely a change in colour palette in the 90s. Because you go from, like, this and The Rescuers mm. to Aladdin and... What are the 90s Disney films are there? Pff, Tarzan, Lion King. They're all quite brightly coloured. But this is, like, grey the whole way through. I get it's supposed to be Victorian London, but also, it's fucking grey. Well, there's different ages of Disney films, aren't there? Like Lion King and Aladdin are like the golden age, and then there was like the kind of lost, like Oliver and Company and stuff like this in between. I'm not that Disney knowledgeable, so go into more depth. <laughs> no, no, the colour palette's a bit crap. Anyway, so, you then get the opening, whatever. You then meet a mouse called Dr. David Q. Dawson, and he's just come out of the army, and he's a doctor. 
He's a surgeon. The mouse army. Yeah. And you go to war all the time. He finds Olivia, who's crying in a boot. I don't know why she didn't just stay in the shop. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what? <laughs> she's crying in a little leather boot. In a human-sized boot. Okay. A human-sized boot. She's crawled in it. That's not where she lives, okay. but that's where she's crying. And she asks if he knows Basil of Baker Street. And he's like, no, I don't. But I do know where Baker Street is. So they go to Baker Street to find Basil, who is, by this point, if you haven't already guessed, the mouse version of Sherlock Holmes. Yeah... Is this going to hurt me? It's not the cheeriest film in places. <laughs> I want to say this is half why I picked it, because I know you're a big Sherlock fan. and I watched this when I was about five years old. I can't remember a single thing. Well, right. <laughs> we're going to go on a journey together. Would you like to hold hands? No. <laughs> I think you should, because from what I remember, that King of the Rats dude is fucking, and that bat is fucking terrifying. So they find Basil's house. He lives at 221 and a half Baker Street. Ah, oh, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I already hate it. 221 and a half is genius. Get fucked. And they meet Mrs. Judson. <laughs> oh, fuck off. No. No. Dan's cat's called Sherlock oh. for people that don't know. It's been raining yeah. outside and Olivia and Dawson <laughs> sort of stroll into the house and she's like, you must be wet and cold. Come on, I'll make you some fresh cheese crumpets. Oh. And then suddenly the door blasts open and in walks a low pan looking motherfucker. That's a potentially a niche reference. You know the guy from Big Trouble in Little China? Yes. The like Chinese looking villain yep. with the long moustache and the Dan? No. Like an old Chinese man with a long thin beard. You've never seen Big Trouble in Little China? No. I've already lived. That's going in the hut. Anyway, so in walks a dude looking like that, but it's actually Basil in disguise, and he's worked out immediately that Dawson is a military surgeon, and he says, ah, it's elementary, dear Dawson. Waiting for Dan's reaction? Nothing. Is this just a copy of Sherlock Holmes, but in a mouse form? Yes. Is that what they're going yes. with? Okay, fine. So he sits down and he starts playing the violin. <laughs> for fuck's sake. <laughs> they literally had nothing original? Fucking hell. Well, I guess better. Just the mouse bit. This did come out in 1986, though. It is 1986, yeah. Fucking hell. Yeah, so it was pre all the new fancy Sherlock's. No Robert Downey Jr.'s <sighs> or Cumberbatch's. This was the best you were getting until the Ian McKellen one in 2014 or whatever. Uh, anyway, so he's playing the violin and Olivia strolls up to him and she's like, my daddy's gone and I'm alone. And he's like, where's your mum? And she's like, oh, I don't know. She's disappeared as well. I just told you I was alone, you prick. Don't bring it up. And he says, I've got no time for lost fathers. <laughs> <laughs> so he can't be bothered to try and help her look for the dad. What a prick. <laughs> Until she mentions the bat that broke in, whose name is Fidget, and he's got a peg leg. <laughs> He's got one wooden leg. I don't know why. It's never explained. It's just that he's got... The bat has yeah. the bat has a wooden leg. Yeah, the bat has a wooden leg. And Baz was like, yeah, I'm in. Fuck that bat and his bastard boss. <laughs> Rattigan. Rattigan is the big bad in this film. <laughs> also, Fidget wears a little flat cap and a scarf a lot of the time. <laughs> he does, yeah. He might be the best thing about this film, I think. Yeah. So it turns out that Rattigan took Olivia's dad, who is called Flavisham, uh, and he wants him to what? build. Sorry, what? What are these names? Flavisham. <laughs> yeah, it was the Victorian Flavisham? age. Victorian time, isn't it? Flavisham. Like Miss Havisham. Yeah. That sounds like something you just like you just made up right now. You, <laughs> you combine two words. You combine Flav and Shum into two words. Like oh yeah, because Flav and Shum are both very <laughs> common words. I don't know. Like Flav is a playoff of like me and Penny talked about recently. Flavor Flav. So Flav. He's not though. He's and... Flavor Flav. You literally <laughs> just said it. He's Flav, yeah. not Flav. He's not f Russian. Flav the Impaler. I rest my case. If I was going to come up with a name off the top of my head, it'd be something like John. Johnny Fridge book. <laughs> <laughs> That's better. Flavisham sounds like Miss Havisham from. All right, all right, carry on. Carry on. Expectations or yeah, Northanger yeah, yeah. Agby or whichever one of those shit books I had to read. Flavisham. All right. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I love that that's your problem with His this. name is Flavisham, and Rattigan wants him to build some sort of weird robot, but you never explain why until later on. And her dad, Flavisham, is like, "No, nah, I'm not doing that." So you, what Rattigan does... <laughs> you say it so casually. Oh, no, nah, I'm, anyway. nah, I'm not interested. So what is Rattigan it? does is he squeezes the dancing mouse's head or body until the head pops off and says, this could be your daughter. <laughs> He's scary and threatening. Yeah. What? So of the actual mouse? No, you know the dancing mouse that she had? 
Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay. I just had real bad imagery in my fucking head there. <laughs> Jesus. I mean, in fairness, you're not far off because it is like that throughout most of it. Yeah, really? it is yeah. pretty dark. Tuck the kids in. Ratigan writes a list of demands or demands or like things. It's like a shopping list and he gives it to the bat, Fidget, Fidget the bat, who then exits the storm drain via another storm drain. Right. Which confused the fuck out of me. <laughs> Why? You know the storm drains you get on the road where you've got like, it's like a grate and you have to. Yeah. So there's another one of those inside that drain. Yeah. Cause it's, it's the, the it's lots of drains. next level. No, yeah. It's, it's different bollocks. levels. Bollocks. Different level. <laughs> bollocks, mate. Bollocks. Bollocks. Anyway, Ratigan's plan is to become the supreme leader of the entire mousedom by ousting the mouse queen, who looks like Queen Victoria, because we're in Victorian era, England. Of course. There's a couple of songs in this film. One of them occurs now. I'm not going to sing it for you, but I will tell oh, you. Oh, come <laughs> on. Give us a song. I will tell you that one of the lines, he's talking about how evil this plan is, and the chorus mice sing the line... Worse than the widows and orphans you drowned. <laughs> Again, this is a Disney film where they're talking about drowning children. Okay. Yeah, but again, that was all... One day I want to do a whole thing on terrifying children's movies because they were just the norm when I was younger. 1986. I mean, and I was only one. But like when I grew up, we had Watership Down and the Animals of Farthingwood and... One day we'll talk about Return to Oz, but I'm not emotionally ready to uh, watch that. Do you know what? I was yeah. talking about that the other day. Like, I can't watch that. Still can't watch it. No. Yeah, and just just dark. There was like, Disney had a lot of, I mean, they still kind of do. They had a lot of dead parents. Yeah. We had like yeah. The Land Before yeah. that was, Time. That was, a trope. was pretty sad yeah. in the first kind of five, ten minutes. Fucking the, Matilda. the fox and the hound. Like, yeah, it's Matilda just... with a paedophile, you know. Fucking don't over bring it. that up again, <laughs> for the love of God. Please don't. Anyway, so one of the drunk mice calls Ratigan the world's greatest rat, and he's like, what are you talking about? I ain't no rat, son. So he takes him outside, uh, and then he gets his cat, Felicia, to eat him. <laughs> Bye, Felicia. Meanwhile, Fidget has turned up outside two to one and a half. <laughs> That's difficult to say. Two, two, one and a half. And they realise it's the bat, so they chase him down and they find his flat cap and then go to see Toby, who is Sherlock Holmes's basset hound. Oh, yeah. Now, Toby doesn't like Dawson, but he does like Olivia because she feeds him a cheese crumpet and then gives him a belly rub. That's all basset hounds want. <laughs> yeah. Basil keeps calling Olivia the wrong name. Like, he keeps trying to say Miss Flavisham, but instead he calls her Flanhammer. <laughs> Yeah, I can see why Miss he would have <laughs> issues with that. What was it? Book? Fridge, fridge book. Miss Flanhammer. Miss Flanhammer I, is fucking genius. I'm That's right, definitely looking at the wrong, like, just picking two words. He's having problems with that fucking word. I'm having problems with, like, it's relatable. Just saying. He also calls her Miss Flamchester. <laughs> and I don't know what. Okay, now he's pushing it. Okay, now he's pushing it. <laughs> um, so Toby gets the centre of the bat and they chase him through, or they, like, track him down through London. They're all riding on the back of him because, obviously, Fidget is actually in a nondescript toy shop trying to get toys things are... for... It's not Toys R Us. There wasn't Toys R Us no, in toys 1897. Are toys are on us. <laughs> toys are on us. <laughs> Mouse are us. So he's gone to finish off the shopping list and he sees that Toby and the mouses are turning up. So he disappears, really. He, like, flutters away. We're we staying with mouses? Yeah, that was the deliberate choice because I know it would annoy you. Yep, just checking. Did it? Didn't annoy me. I was just, I wondered if they called them mouses and that you were putting that in or whether you were just being ornery. No, I've put that in myself. Even with Disney films, he's still trying to annoy us. Yep, worry not. So they find the, they follow the clues, they find the toy shop and there's a load of toy soldiers that have been stripped of their uniforms and a load of clockwork gears removed from wind-up toys. Because on Fidget's list, he has uniforms, gear, not gear. <laughs> I mean, it'd be good if he was going to pick up weed, wouldn't it? Uh, <laughs> Where's that? And, and <laughs> you really set the scene yeah. really well. You should be a narrator. Just the narrator all of a sudden goes, you want to pick up gear? I mean, it'd be fucking great picking up a bit of weed, right? Wouldn't it? Hey, that's hey, that's hey, that's hey. Basil then moved the table. <laughs> He's also got to get the girl as well on Save the list. Save the world, get the girl. Well, yeah, she's his leverage, isn't she? 
She is the leverage. She's just leverage. So they find the lists, but then they realise that Olivia isn't with them because she's looking at the toys. She looks in a little pram, and inside is Fidget, who throws her in a bag and then sets a trap using all the other toys to get Basil and Dawson, including a giant porcelain doll who falls over and their face smashes into pieces. It's pretty terrifying. It's just unnecessary. Why did I say it like that? It's just unnecessary. (laughs) Cut that out. Thank you. There's also a clown and a load of puppets and, you know, she gets kidnapped. Good. (laughs) So once Basil and Dawson are free of the traps, they head back to Baker Street to work out where she's gone. And they still have the list. She's not a Baker Street. She's not a Baker Street. (laughs) You're right. But they still have the list. So they set the list alight. Right. Then they do a whole chemistry shit. Purely to work out that it's got sodium chloride in it. Mm. <laughs> so they like set it alight, get all these chemicals, mix it all together. They have it around one of those fucking spirally tubes. Oh, yeah. And then they're like, oh, yes, a single drop. It's sodium chloride. And I'm like, just, just fucking taste it. Might be poison. Might be salt. You work it out. So what What else I does mean, that tell them? So what do they learn? The dissecting Disney films. There. <laughs> so that tells them that wherever... The children's book. paper was from was from a place near salt water. Narrows it down by the Thames. So they then decide to try and find a pub that is both next to a river and next to the sewer, which they find. Because, you know, water can't move through the sewer and start in one place and end up somewhere else. No. Silly mouse logic. Exactly. Meanwhile, Fidget takes Olivia back to Ratkin and puts her in a glass bottle. I thought she would have suffocated, but apparently not. <laughs> Do they cork and it up? Rattigan. Yeah, they cork it up. Oof. She should be dead in like a matter of minutes. Yeah. You're horrible. Classic Disney, you know what I mean? <laughs> classic Disney. You're just adding to classic Disney fucking trust. Like, oh, she should have died and shit. <laughs> I'm reading between the lines here. Yeah, I know. So Rattigan is like, ah, oh, you've done excellent work, Fidget, but you've forgotten the list. You've lost it. Come and meet the cat. Oh, poor Fidget. And then the cat sort of chews him up a bit. And then spits him out because he's fucking annoying. Meanwhile, what's he called? Basil? Fucking Basil. Basil and Dawson dress up as semen to go to this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm trying so hard Stop. on the law. Oh my God. Oh, come really? on, Penny. Really? Come on, Penny. You're better than oh, that. Fuck. He said it that way to make me laugh. He knows exactly fucking what I'm Fucking like. the jokes on this show are fucking top notch, aren't they? Jesus, You're better than that, Penny. I'm not. I'm really not. <laughs> Sound like a bunch of twats. So, <laughs> so they're dressed up as sailors, sort of, and they go to this pub called The Rat Trap, and there's a fucking octopus on stage who is juggling. Yeah. I don't know why there's an octopus in Victorian London. It came through the sewer. Presumably it would have come from the river. But, you know, I've never seen an octopus in the Thames, you know? You're only questioning the logic of, well, there's mouses here and now there's an octopus. What the fuck? Why is an octopus in the mouse world? Like, it's. <laughs> well, yeah, why is there an octopus Suspend in the mouse world? Suspend your disbelief, man. <laughs> For God's sake, to quote Penny. <laughs> Basil says to Dawson that they need to sort of fit in. So he calls the wench waitress over and says they've just got into port and they're looking for an old mate. His name is Rattigan and everyone stops talking. The piano stops playing and it's like one of those classic like, (gasps) oh no, (gasps) scenarios. Yep. There's also a sexy little mouse who comes out and does a burlesque number. Pardon? (laughs) <laughs> now Dan's interested questions no no sorry a, a sexy mouse okay is that like the sexy dinosaur in Theodore X what, what sorry was was she called sexy mouse or have you added the sexy on the, on the top of that is it not just assumed if they do burlesque it's kind of sexy yeah I mean it's pretty assumed she was doing no, a burlesque no, no, dance no, 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 she was no, no, in no, no, sort no. of fishnets of course personal it. preference you're the fairy here Dan so I mean it's fine <laughs> I'm we're not, not a judging. fairy I'm fucking there's no judgement here But much like the sexy dinosaur from Theodore Rex, there's a sexy mouse. He does a burlesque number, and whilst everyone is watching the stage, the waitress spikes the beers that she was going to give to... I I just want to call him Sherlock, but it's not his name. She gives to Basil (laughs) and Dawson. Basil doesn't drink his because he's a sensible boy, but Dawson does, and then all of a sudden he's on stage with the burlesque dancers doing a dance. He then falls onto a piano and starts a full bar brawl. All been there. Have we? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
They then see Fidget in the bar who goes through like a hatch behind the bar. You know, the ones that like you drop down into the cellar. Yeah. Yes. Where they keep the bodies. Yeah. Well, who's making it dark now? It's yeah. not me. <laughs> Well, anyway, that's what I'm expecting at this work. They follow him. They go through some sewer pipes and they find Rattigan's secret lair. And they also see the bottle that Olivia is in and they rush to save her. They knock on the glass and like, Olivia, we're here to save you. <laughs> Except it's actually Fidget in disguise. <laughs> Sorry, wh- what trap. accent was that? I don't know. It just happened. It just kind of just happened. Let's keep going. <laughs> it's in Newcastle. The second that Fidget... It was a bit northern, wasn't it? The second that northern, Fidget yeah. turns around... <laughs> shut up. Uh-huh. The second that Fidget turns around, <laughs> there's a banner. <laughs> there's a banner that drops that says, Welcome, Basil, and there's confetti and everything. And some music plays, and they're like, Oh, you're 15 minutes late. Ratigan essentially calls him a shit detective and then puts him in a mouse trap. <laughs> and this is a little bit overkill to me. So they're in a mouse trap, and surrounding the mouse trap is a gun, an axe, a crossbow... And an anvil above them, and it's like a Rue Goldberg sort of saw trap. Yeah. When you say they're in a mouse trap, mm-hmm. not the board game. I know it's not the game. For fuck's <laughs> sake, my well, IQ's not that fucking low. Jesus, right? When you say they're in a mouse trap, yeah. Like, is the mouse trap set? So the mouse trap is in... set. They're tied to the board. Oh, okay. So it's ready right, to it's ping. Gonna fall. Yeah. So what happens is there's like a big. And a big uh, ball, a and it falls down all these things, and it does all these other things, and then the mouse trap goes off. Oh no, wait, that is the ball game. It is a bit like <laughs> mouse trap, really, because it is like that. Because there is a ball that sort of goes down this tube. Well, who's the fucking idiot now? <laughs> <laughs> it's still you. <laughs> But it's all set around this record player, and once the, there's a bit of string tied to the record player, once it goes taut and the record finishes, so dramatic. it'll pull this so extra. cork out, which will then set the ball rolling. But once the ball hits the mousetrap, the mousetrap will ping shut on him, presumably killing him instantly. But it'll also set off the gun, the crossbow, the anvil, and the axe. Can't be too careful. It's excessive, if you ask me. Mm. Yeah, just kick the mousetrap, they're dead. Yeah, it's obviously not humane, you know. It's not a human trap. Why do we have to have a build up to it? Well, we'll find out. Well, he Fucking clearly doesn't get killed amateurs. by any of this, so your point is moot. If what I've learned from Agent 47 and Timothy Olfen <laughs> is that you just get your gun and go bang, you're dead, and move on. That's it. So, uh, so back to Ratigan and the gang. <laughs> He's heading to Buckingham Palace because he wants to give the Queen a special present. The real one? No, the Mouse Queen. <laughs> <laughs> the Mouse one? Yeah, okay. The Mouse yeah. Queen. He looks like Queen Victoria. And the special present is a robot queen, <laughs> oh, yeah. which he can control. <laughs> I remember this now. But also, because it's like 1897, it's fucking really jerky and it just doesn't work that well. It's like clockwork. So why does he give the queen a robot queen? Because he wants to take over. So he's going to get rid of the queen and then make the robot queen essentially his bitch. And the robot queen will say, <laughs> and the robot queen will say, he's our special correspondent or whatever. He can be our top dog. And then he can rule right. the galaxy. Or at least the mouse parts of London. Okay. The mouse parts. Is there a NASA space program for the mouses called Ma- Massa instead of NASA? Oh, God. <laughs> that was one of the worst things you've ever said. Yep. I know. I'm just going there. What does the end um, stand? The National Association of Space. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> so now is it the Mouse Association of Space Astronauts? Just checking. Yes. Okay. That's why it's called NASA. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <it's laughs> move on. Please. Anyway, so Fidget takes the real queen, and as he drags her away, he says, Here you are, sweetheart. Oh, no, that's when he gives her the present. He's definitely the highlight of this film. I do like Fidget. I mean, he's a bit creepy, but also he's pretty fun. Anyway, they take the queen away and they're going to feed her to the cat. Meanwhile, Basil and Dawson, Basil's having a bit of an existential crisis and he thinks he really is a shit detective Mm. and just a shit mouse in general. And Dawson says, well, if you think it's that shit, why don't we just set it off ourselves? So they then set off the mousetrap by themselves, but they time it just at the right time so they can catch the marble that's come down the tube with the trap so they don't die. Right. Somehow it sets off all the other weapons, including the axe, which cuts the mouse trap in half so they can escape and then the anvil drops. Smart. Thank you. It is a bit like the game mouse trap. No, you mentioned it. Yeah, it kind of is. It pretty much sounds like it. Maybe you should apologise to Dan. Yeah, maybe. Sorry, Dan. Oh, you're most excused. Oh, yeah. Ratigan says, uh, make sure you smile for the camera when you get crushed. And once they're out, the camera flashes and they're doing a winning pose. <laughs> 
I don't know what a winning pose is, but they're doing one. <laughs> anyway, back to the Queen. Fidget is dragging her along, saying, come here, fatty, and you're a ton, toots. <laughs> what? <laughs> He's calling the Queen mouse fat, and I don't know why. What was the second thing? You're a ton, toots. A ton, toots? No, he calls her toots. As in, right, you toots. weigh her a ton, you weigh a and ton. he's called her toots. Oh, toots. Oh, okay. That's okay. I haven't heard that in 50 years. Well, that's convenient because this was out 1897. Ah, oh, that's true. Mm. Meanwhile, the robot queen is like, Ratigan is our new supreme statesman. He's so cool and stuff, and we just want him to be a good person, but really, he's going to boss you all around. I'm just surprised there wasn't a democratic vote. Meanwhile, Toby turns up and takes the good mices to Buckingham Palace. And Basil manages to save the Queen just in time before she gets eaten. Toby the dog then chases away Felicia the cat. Ah, good old Toby. Rattigan is setting out some new laws, including a heavy tax shall be levied against all parasites and sponges, such as the elderly, the infirm, and especially <laughs> little children. So it turns out he's a Tory. <laughs> sounds like it. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. it sounds like a Tory government. <laughs> Basil finds the remote control for the robot and essentially calls him a bellend and a sewer rat. Sounds a bit like Boris. He doesn't call him a bellend. What does he call him? What does he call him? He doesn't call a him a wet bellend. Wipe. Uh, he says a whole load of stuff like he's a nasty person and stuff. But frankly, <laughs> a, a bellend person. is a lot quicker way of saying that. Okay. Fine. Everyone else is like, fuck you, and they try to get rat him, but <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, he gets away. Because I might prefer him. this kind of script to the actual original. Does everyone go, fuck you, you're, you're a bastard. <laughs> Piss off. They've somehow kidnapped Olivia again. <laughs> so it's the second time she's been kidnapped. Nobody looking after her after the first time. I don't know. Basil and Pearls catch up to Ratigan, but Ratigan has jumped onto his airship, so Basil has to improvise using some balloons and the Union flag. <laughs> they then uh, chase him through the air. It's a bit like a dogfight, except they're mice. And... Uh, <laughs> Oh, I can't believe there's no appreciation for that. Come on, that was good. I'm just trying to process it. It's great. It's like a dog fight, but they're mice. You've upset Dan so much, he's speechless. It doesn't happen very often. No, no, no. Just... <laughs> All right, well, let's keep going. We're near the end. So they chase him through the air, and then they both crash. Well, technically, Ratigan's airship crashes into the clock face of Big Ben, but Basil is also on that airship. They go through the glass, and they're all like stuck in mechanical gears and stuff. Basil grabs Ratigan's cape. He's got a cape because he's like an evil person. They all have capes. Evil Victorians. Makes sense. Yeah. He chucks it in the gears and it starts to strangle him. And then he uses a chain to zoom upwards to get Olivia before she's crushed by some gears, even though Ratigan kicked her downwards. <laughs> so fuck knows how physics works. Uh, they manage to get her back and Basil's balloon is there. And they put her on the balloon, but before he can go on, Ratigan pushes them both off, and suddenly they're back on the clock again. Right. Yeah, I mean... I'm with you. Just apparently about. Big Ben, like, Big Ben is just an anti-gravity chamber. <laughs> Maybe it is. Because it, it, just, it just seems that you go one way and suddenly you're at the top. Is this the mouse Big Ben, or is this the human Big Ben? This is the human Big Ben. This is a human... Okay, it just clarifies the mouse Big Ben and mouse parliament <laughs> is, of mouses. <laughs> is that not because, like, say they were on a gear and the gears go round and they can and there's chains and things going up and down? Is it not that? I don't know, Ben. I mean, I would have thought if you kick someone down off a gear... They're going to end up below you and not yeah, so far would. above you that you need to grab a chain to yeah, ping yourself true. up to the top. Yeah. Anyway, so Ratigan and Basil, they're on the hands of the clock. And it's in the rain, so it's very reminiscent of some very famous Sherlock Holmes imagery. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel like Dan's just like in his special place. Yeah, I don't like, I don't like this film. <laughs> I'll be honest. I'll be honest. There's no originality here except for the fucking the mouse. Oh, yeah, because mice mice have never existed before this film. Can't believe it. They invented the mice. Yeah, I guess the, the octopus, octopus is the only original bit. <laughs> anyway, so they're on the uh, hands of the clock. Big Ben strikes, and suddenly they're both full. Except Basil fell holding a part of the airship, and he's pedalling away, and he's made himself a little helicopter. He's made himself a helicopter? Yeah. Out of? <laughs> Out of the part of the airship that he uh, fell holding on to. So it's to. a transformer, his airship. <laughs> Well, yeah, let's go for yeah. So Ratigan dies, I assume. He falls from the top of the House of Parliament. And then uh, everyone's safe and well. They go back to 221 and a half Baker Street. <laughs> and Basil is saying goodbye to Olivia and her dad. And he says, I'll never forget you, Miss Flangerhammer. Wait, when did they get the dad back? Oh, yeah, they got the dad back when they were uh, pissing around with the robot queen. <laughs> Just after he called him a bellend, I think. <laughs> 
Let's go back to Flanghammer. Dan, thoughts? Out of the three names, is that the best one so far? What's that one? Flanghammer? Miss Flangerhammer. Well, that's the fucking worst <laughs> one. <laughs> Flangerhammer? That's like a shortened version of flinging a hammer. <laughs> flang a hammer. Oh, how did he I get hurt? He just flung a, flang a hammer at him and it hit him I flang a hammer the other day. Yeah. Oh, did he flang a hammer at you? Yeah, he did. Just <laughs> over there bollocks. flanging hammers. What a brick. <laughs> Someone will get hurt. What a fucking joke of a film this is. So they leave and Dawson is like, yeah, I'll become your partner if you want. We can be colleagues or whatever. And then a client comes in and they go to solve another crime. And that's it. Dawson. Watson. What? Da- I just got it. Dawson and Watson. Dawson. Yeah. I, well, that's no. literally the last line of the film and you've got it. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm special. You got Mrs. Judson pretty quickly. Yeah, well, fuck. That's the worst. <laughs> that's the second worst. <laughs> Mrs. Judson. <laughs> As they zoom out from 221 and a half Baker Street, you see 221B Baker Street and you see Sherlock in the window playing a bloody violin. So, <laughs> so hang on. I've got a question. Mm-hmm. Who lives in 221 then? If they live in 221, so they live next to Sherlock, the real sh- no, human no, no, no. Sherlock. No, they live underneath. Because they're like mice. Yeah, underneath Sherlock, the re- human Sherlock, I would assume then, right? Yeah. Ah. But you never see him. Well, you see him as they pan out. Yeah, he was playing he's the playing violin. He's playing the violin in the window. Oh, yeah. And that's the end. You know, it actually wasn't that bad. Yeah. It's, not that bad. it's quite interesting. I mean, there were other Disney Mouse films I was going to watch. Were they the rescuers? I've actually got another cartoon mouse film that I might watch next week it, that's also probably trap. quite fucking bleak. <laughs> so I feel like I need to you're in for a treat. correct myself a little bit. I did just look up the Disney eras and it was part of the Bronze Age 1970 to 1988, which was the Aristocats, Robin Hood, the Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, the Rescuers, the Fox and the Hound, the Black Cauldron, the Basil the Great Mouse Detective, and Oliver and Company. Yeah, they're all a bit crap apart from Robin Hood. Robin Hood is mm. one of the best Disney movies ever. Yeah, it's got a sexy little fox in it. <laughs> Who's the furry now? Oh, but here, let me show you how it works. Picture this. First, a sprightly tune I've recorded especially for you. As the song plays, the chord tightens. And when the song ends, the metal ball is released, rolling along its merry way until... Slap! Boom! Twang! Thunk! Splat! And so ends the short undistinguished career of Basil of Baker Street. Well, thank you, Andy. And that's the end of this episode. Penny, what's our socials? Ooh. Stop looking at your phone. <laughs> oh, sorry, I was just uh, writing down some things for the next episode, but I think I'll just bail and let Dan do it. Oh, all. sorry. No, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I'm apologising. So, so grumpy. After, do you want a tic-tac? Will that make you feel better? No, I'll end up like you and falling over. When did I fall over? <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, you can find us on Instagram and Facebook at Unusual Suspects Pod and on Twitter at Unusual Podspect. We're on YouTube too. I never mentioned that because we don't have like <gasps> a, a YouTube handle because we're not fancy enough. But Not yet. Give us a thousand subscribers. Dan's put some stuff on there. Reddit don't really like it, but other people seem to like it. So <laughs> have a look. <laughs> I'm at Penny underscore Photo Pit. At Dan Talks a lot. At Choices 21. Film out of the hat next week oh. is Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. <laughs> We're not on a quest. Do you want to dress up for that episode? <laughs> Wait, was Power oh, Rangers sorry. ever a what? game? <laughs> It wasn't, was it? There have been Power Rangers games, but it didn't start yeah. the game. I was going to say, we're not no, on a quest to find the show. best computer game movie. Don't drag us into it, but it wasn't. So, Do you want to you want to dress up next week? <laughs> Only if you're the pink Power Ranger. <laughs> I'll be the pink Power Ranger, yeah. Where is that coming from? I was actually going to dress up as a dinosaur. <laughs> I was going to be a, a Megazord. Where the fuck am I going to find Power Rangers uniform in COVID times? What the fuck? <laughs> Delivered in a week. <laughs> <laughs> Amazon Prime. Are they for six foot people? Because that's going to be an issue if not. <laughs> no. We're not even recording after no. dark. <laughs> we just be Nobody would see it. at each other. It's just for our own fun. You'll be like, look, look at his costume. And we'll be like, oh, no one can see. Wait, can oh, anyone right. see? No one saw our Halloween costumes that we did literally two seconds before we started. We just took a picture, I think. I wore a poncho and if I was a ghost. Enough, I can't remember what I did. <laughs> I won't dress up, but I will quote this film quite a lot because I know all the quotes. Get happy about that. Dan, how often do you watch Power Rangers? Every day. Anyway, we'll, we'll be back next week with 39.
No, we won't. Yeah. 39. Yes, we're back to 39. <laughs> I thought you were going to do a bingo thing, but... So did I. No. Having a great time. It's number Having 39. A... Oh, fuck. He always beats me to it. I was thinking of it. I was like, great time. Great time. Say it. And then you said it. I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. Power Rangers next week. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and some other stuff. Have a lovely day. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> if we all sound like a bunch of... Okay, I'm just going to end it there. Bye. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Bye.